Let's try that again. That's better. Good morning, Mount Sinai. <laughs> This is the day that the Lord has made. The third Sunday in the month of May. Church in the parking lot. Now if you love the Lord and if God has been good to you, one more time, hold those horns and give God praise. Yeah. 
been good. He's 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 been
Open your door and tell Jesus Christ. Not to who won that heart. Blood and died on Calvary Cross. The Lord will come on this Sunday morning to lift our hands and give you praise. The Lord be with us that no one wonder to be praised. Keep on, keep on. 
of reading this morning, the majesty of God, Psalm chapter 8, verses 1 through 9, instead of responsive, we're all going to read it together. If you have your bulletin, it's on the back of the bulletin, our responsive reading, we're going to read it all together, the majesty of God, Psalm chapter 8, verses 1 through 9. We ready? One, two, three, let's read. O oh Lord, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visited him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, Yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Hawk your horns for Jesus. She's going to give us our welcome after Sister Thomas comes, the praise team will be on their way. God bless you, Mount Sinai, in Jesus' name. All praises to God, to Pastor Roberts, and all of those that are here in your cars today. If we have any first-time visitors on our drive-in church parking lot, honk your horns. Well, it seems that we are all family here today, but we just want to say that we've come for no other purpose than to lift up the name of Jesus, to let the neighborhood know that we have a God who can do anything. And so today we just want to come and worship him in spirit and in truth. We just want to welcome you. We want you to just enjoy the service. But when you leave here today, remember what the word says. We come here to worship, but we depart to serve. So when you leave here today, be ready to serve. Jesus, honk your horns, the praise team is making their way.
Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands, even if you are inside your car, just lift up your hands and say, Lord, I thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. We thank you because we are not in the grave. We are not in the sick bed. We are alive to praise you. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you for the good health you have given unto us. We thank you for the strength you have given unto us. We thank you for the new revelation you are giving to the church of Christ. We say thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord. We take up our music equipment. And we lift up our voice to you, Lord. Yes, because we know the battle is not over. We know you are the, the one who can give us the victory of this battle. So we come to declare your word as an oracle of yours. We decree healing upon our land. We decree healing upon our government. We decree healing upon our ministry. We decree healing upon the church of Christ. We decree healing upon your people. For your word says, if my people that are called by my name will humble my themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. sick among us you said in your word that we should call on the elders of the church we should call on the authority of the church and the church would decree healing over such a one so dear Lord today I kneel before your altar I present our case before you you said in your word, present your case, says the Lord. Bring forth strong reasons, says the God of Jacob. So Lord, we present our case before you. We present our brethren before you. If we continue in sickness, the word will ask us, where is our God? If this virus continues without the church authority, without the church speaking, yes. they will ask us, where is our God? Mm, come on. You have put the wisdom of the world to become foolishness. Yes. So Lord, we ask that you manifest your power today. Yes. And reveal your glory. Heal the sick. Heal homes. That are in crisis right now. Please God. Please God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Heal marriages. Please in God. the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Restore our children. Please God. Restore our home. Please God. Restore our family. Yes, sir. Restore our nation. Please God. Please in God. the name of Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus Christ. We lift up America. We use, oh God, Saint Antonio as a point of contact to reach out to the government house. That they will know that there is a God in America. Speak for your word. Speak for your word. Heal our land. We present our doctors, Tosca, Tosca. our nurses, and social workers before you, Lord. Tosca, Tosca. That you heal and protect and save. Your word says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. For where cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. As you heal America, heal the 
Ward. Heal the Ward, Lord. Heal the church, Lord. Heal the church, Lord. Heal the church, Lord. Let your revelation, let there be an upward of your revelation in the church today. Raise up Elijah. Raise up Daniel. Raise up, oh God, Deborah. Raise up women and men of value that will pull the work of darkness down and lift up your word and your glory that the world will see and glorify your name in the name of Jesus Christ. So then we decree and declare is there anything that is speaking over our nations that is hindering the manifestation of your power today we destroy it now in the name of Jesus Christ we destroy it now in the name of Jesus Christ we lift up our pastor Pastor Gary Robert the prophet that you have given to us to reveal your word to us oh God please God let him not speak of himself, but speak to him as an oracle of yours. In the name of Jesus Christ, In the name of Jesus. as we connect to him, O oh Lord, you said in your word that I and the children that God has given to me, we are made for signs and wonders. I decree, O oh God, that there be signs and wonders today. In our home, in our businesses, in our marriage, in, in our family, let there be a manifestation in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you said in your word in Jeremiah 33 verse 3 that we should call on you and you will answer us. And you will show us great and mighty things that we do not know. Lord, today is the day that you have made that we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let there be an outpour of your healing power. Let there be an outpour of your revelation. Let there be an outpour of your power. Let there be a divine utterance. Like it was in the day of Elijah. Like it was in the day of Daniel. Like it was in the days of David. Like it was in the days of Moses. That the heart of men and women will return back unto you. That we all will sing praises. That without a fight, we have achieved victory. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you for Mount Sinai Ministry, the Mount Sinai Baptist Church. We thank you for the members of Mount Sinai Baptist Church. We use them to reach out to the world. We bless your name, Lord. Send forth your angels. Send forth your angels. As we go through this wilderness, send forth your angels. Send forth your angels to be at the front, to be at our back. To the land of promise, to the land of your revival, to your revival, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father. Our home, our children, our saints. We thank you, oh God, for those who do not know you in the church of Christ, that sit in leadership position. That this is the time that they will come to you, touch their heart, and return it back unto you. Save us, O Lord. Let every word that comes from this altar, from this church, be a word of healing and deliverance. We speak to the life of those in the hospital right now. We speak to the life of those that have lost loved ones. Oh God, that your word 
of consolation will be revealed today. In Jesus' name. Righteous. Amen. Praise God. Now listen. Since we pray, if you turn it off, it'll do that. Listen. If we prayed like that, you ought to leave out of here on cloud nine today. Amen. Ready for this week and ready to believe and trust God. Amen. All right. Well, now listen. We worship God in singing, prayer and everything, but now we're going to give to the kingdom work. And as we give today, I'm going to ask Mount Sinai, let's be aware of ministry. If you need an envelope, we have envelopes if you don't have one. But listen, God has been keeping us through this epidemic, and it's been no one but God. So we want to be obedient to him. We want to follow his instruction. And so as we do so, I'm going to ask us, let's give now as we prepare to give God our tithes and our offerings. Those of you who are our friends and guests and you're fellowshipping with us today, you can support this ministry by giving. Uh, we also, you can give online through, uh, I think, Tivy, uh, Cash App, and, and, and whatever. But the brothers are going to come by in just a few moments. We're going to pray over this offering and offering you're about to give. We want you to know that we are good stewards of what God gives us to make sure that God's business is taken care of. Uh, Brother Roderick uh, Thomas is here. He has a key out if you want to give by, by credit card, a debit card. You can come forward. He'll take care of that for you. Amen. And so I want to let you know we appreciate whatever you do. I got to talk to you about something after we've given. So let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you now for this offering that we're giving. And we pray, Father, that... You are pleased with it. We pray as we give today in obedience to your word. We ask you, Lord, to touch these, your people. Open up the windows of heaven and pour by the blessing. There won't be room to receive as they obey you and give in their tithes and their offering. And then, God, I pray that you will do it so their family, their neighbors, their co-workers can see that your hand is on their lives. We praise you and we thank you for keeping this ministry going. And Lord, our trust is totally in you. So bless as we give today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And thank God.
Sunday will be our youth day, so our youth are going to be here, and they're going to be doing some things. We want you to come out and be a part. And if y'all don't mind, listen, won't everybody hear me? It's getting warmer now, so I'm going to have us start at 945. So let's, let's make that adjustment, and we're doing that for your consideration. I want you to be here uncomfortable so next sunday we'll be starting off kicking off at 9 45. sunday school you'll have to make your adjustments but we want to we don't want to stay out here in the heat too long so if you need to start your car and turn on the air condition you're welcome to do that as long as you don't have those big pipes and everything on there the drown is out but we're going to we're going to do everything we can we may have to move to nine o'clock as the summer comes on so you'll have to get up a little bit earlier but that ought not be a problem if you have the can't help it amen all right now listen mount sinai i want to thank you for being committed to ministry thank you for coming out and i know that you take a chance by coming out but we try to keep you as safe as we can but I want to thank you for supporting through all of this. And so, listen, we do have some issues that have come up. And um, I was talking to finance committee this week, and I've got an emergency that we have to, I have to raise by, by Wednesday. By Wednesday, I have to raise $1,600. And so I'm going to ask, going to ask our brothers and ask our sisters. I need at least 20 of us. Or I can get 15 of us to give $100. That'll be good if you can give 50. But I want you to hear your pastor. I need you to hear me today. I wouldn't ask you to do it if it wasn't an emergency. I need this. I need to have it done. We've got some electrical work I've got to have taken care of. The man's going to start on tomorrow. And um, it's something that we can't let go. So I'm going to need you to let the deacons know or let me know, someone in the church, let Sister Mildred know, Brother Cole know. But if you have it today, I want you to give it today. But I'm going to need at least about 15 people to give $100. If, if, I've, got, if I've got 20 of y'all to give 50, that will help us get further down. Whatever you give, we'll receive it. Amen? So need you to do that before we leave here or do it by tomorrow, whatever. But that's a must. You gotta have it done. Now, look, one more thing. Let me say this. We thank God for Deacon Nate Batson. His cousin loaned us this trailer. Amen. Come on. But since the country is opening back up, the city is opening back up, we're going to, we're going to have to give this man back his trailer. So we're going to build a platform here that we can use all year long. It's ours. We can use it night, day, whatever. But we're going to build a platform here with a cover on it. And uh, we're going to fix it. I was just thinking a while ago. I don't know which way we're going to turn it just yet. But we want to make it for your convenience where the sun is not shining directly on you. Those of you who can see that vision with us, I ask you to help us with that. But we're going to need treated lumber and all these kinds of things. I've got a a friend who's in business trying to pull some strings for us. But we're going to, even after we go back into the building, whenever the Lord says so, every now and then we're going to still come out and have church outside. And I think some of you like outside. You like going to the Lord. Praise God. So listen, we've got a lot of things going on and we need your help. And so you be praying for us while we do this. We've got people all the way down in Honduras and different places who are watching. And we want to, we want to be a blessing to them and people in this neighborhood. So help us do that. Will you do it? Father God, how we love you.
again, thank you for the opportunity to go forward in ministry. If you would now, breathe upon these monies that have been received. Use it as you see fit, Lord, and then help us to be good stewards and good managers of that in which you bless us with. In Jesus' name, devil of the liar. Amen and amen. amen. All right, now, uh, Sister Midge, I need you to come on right now. Come on. Sister Midge is going to come and she's going to sing. And um, our time is late. We're going to have Midge to come and sing. And then I'm going to come on back and preach. And uh, I've got one of those hard sermons today. One of them rough ones, y'all. One of those rough ones. You may want to leave now. It's going to be one of those hard ones. I'll try to be easy on it. But i got to give you what God told me to give you. All right? And I pray that I encourage you. We're praying for Brother Michael. Brother Michael and his family, we funeralized his son on yesterday at the True Vision Church, uh, Pastor Jones did. And so we're praying for that family, that, that, that God will keep you. This family is not the first time they've had tragedy. They've, listen, uh, they do funerals on Saturday back in church on Sunday. And they, they've just been, I see you out there, Brunetta. And that, this family, the King family, Phyllis family. And um, we, the Hardeman family, um, we, we're praying for all this family that God will keep them in the loss of this 34-year-old young man. Can I tell you something? Um, coronavirus isn't the worst thing. You can die of anything. So, so don't be so fearful of coronavirus. Put your trust in God. Amen. God can keep you and God will. God will bless you. Amen. All right, come on, Sister Mitch. Can I help you up here? You want to come up here with me, Pastor? You want to sing back there? All right, okay, go ahead. Give me some love as she sings for us. And her husband, her husband, Brother Smitty over, over there with the, with the umbrella. All right, Smitty, come on. Like a ship that's tossed in the river.
sing like Sister Midge. Especially that I, 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 I don't know how she did that, but I'm, I'm practicing that close of hers. There's a word today that is found in Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter seven. several weeks I want to take a little time and preach on it today starting with verse 12 and the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night and said unto him I have heard thy prayers and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice if I shut up the heavens that there be no rain, oh. or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, yes, sir. shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, Damn. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and will heal their land. Yes, sir. I want to talk about God's cure hmm. for man's crisis. All right. God's cure for man's crisis. Amen, amen. Y'all ought to give me some, give me some love right there. Give Solomon, God's king of Israel, has completed the temple and the palace. After several weeks of praise and worship, I don't know if some of us could handle that, but after several weeks of worship and praise in God, the Bible says that God showed up one night. He showed up at Solomon's house, the king's house. And he says to him, Solomon, I heard your prayers. Yeah. And since I've heard those prayers, I'm going to do something about it. Yes, sir. I believe that's why we ought to pray for those in leadership. I'll say that again. I believe that's why we ought to pray for those in leadership. God said to Solomon at night, and I need to say something also there, is that God showed up. Uh -huh. Are y'all with me today? When God's people worship, when God's people praise him from the inside out, yeah. God will show up, and he'll show up with a word. He says, I've heard your prayer. Aren't you glad today that we serve a prayer answering God? We need leadership today, like Solomon. We need leadership of people who believe what they preach and what they teach. There's no need in the church saying we believe God. But during times like this, we take a recess in our faith and become fearful. Solomon and the children of Israel believed God. And they walked, they walked it out and they worked it out and they worshipped it out. And I believe today that if we believe God, that there ought to be a sign that we believe him. That we ought to live like we believe him. And God 
said, I've heard your prayers. And he said, and guess what? And I've accepted this place as my own, as a place of sacrifice. God says, I'll be in this place and I will hear your prayers. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. We're standing on holy ground today. We're sitting and parked on holy ground. And God has chosen this place. And he says, I, I have heard. Now let me just preach a little bit in this text today. We've preached on it. We've talked on it. We've taught on it. But there are a few things that the Lord brought out to me the other night that I want to share with you. Are y'all willing today? First of all, when you look at this text, uh, God gives us his actions. Are y'all with me here? And God's actions are not always what we think actions ought to be. And God doesn't always do things the way we think he ought to do them. Sometimes God does things to blow our mind. Are y'all with me today? So notice what he says to Solomon. I, he showed up. He spoke to Solomon. Are y'all with me? And gave Solomon his approval. But then he says something in verse 13 where I want to preach for a little bit. He says, if I shut up heaven. Are y'all with me? That there be no rain. You mean God can send drought our way? You mean that God has control of the clouds, that he can make the clouds cry and water the land? We serve an awesome God that even the weather, even the weather is in his hands. Not only that, but notice what he says. He says, or if I command the locusts, the grasshoppers to come, and to eat up all of the produce. I wish I had somebody. What an awesome God that even the insects obey God. You know, we ought to at least have insect sense. That if grasshoppers obey him, God's people ought to obey him. Or if I send pestilence. If I send pestilence. The way I sent it when David numbered the people. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get credit for what God had done. Uh -huh. God sent a sickness amongst the people. And immediately it killed over 70,000 people. Sometimes God's acts seem so harsh to us. But who knows the mind and the heart of God but God. God has a way of doing things the way he wants to do it when he gets ready to do it. Are y'all with me today? And who can argue the fact that could it be that even here in 2020 and we're dealing with the COVID, I wish I had somebody, COVID-19 virus, could it be that God sent it? I wish I had somebody. God has a way of dealing with people when they get besides themselves. When they get too big, don't have time for God, don't have time for church, don't have time for worship. Because God has blessed them so much with so many things that we start worshiping the material things instead of worshiping God. And sometimes God has to send pestilence. Sometimes he has to send disease. Sometimes he has to send grasshoppers. Sometimes he has to send frogs. Sometimes he has to send things that will wake us up and make us realize we need the true and living God. He sends pestilence. He allows troubles to come our way. He allows sickness to come our way. Now there are those who preach prosperity. Who won't preach a verse like this. I wish I had somebody. But can I tell you something? It's not always peaches and cream when you're dealing with God. God wants to deal with our hearts and 
with our minds, he wants us to turn back to him. Yeah, yeah. Help me, Lord, while I preach your word today. Notice what verse 14 says. If my people, that's where I want to get to right there. He says, if I allow these things to happen, or if I send these things, these pestilence, these crises, these problems, these troubles that you can't handle, guess what he says? I've got a cure for these situations. I wish I had somebody. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal or cure. Yes, sir. Listen to what he says. If my people, hmm. I like that, that God doesn't make us do anything. He doesn't force us to do anything. He lets us have a choice, a decision to make. And he gives us that conjunction. He says, if, hmm. help me, Lord Jesus, my people, and I want to preach right there for a second. He says, if my people, come on, which are called by my name. Now you need to understand that apart from creation, that God has a chosen people. If you know anything about Bible history, the children of Israel was down in Egypt land. They were the descendants of Abraham, but they found themselves in captivity. Come on, come on. I wish I had somebody. And you know what God did? When they cried out to God, God heard their cry. Oh, help me, Lord. And when, when he answered, he sent Moses to deliver them. And he told Moses, go down in Egypt and tell my people, I wish I had somebody, that I am, that I am, is on your side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody up in here today? Let me tell you something. Just as God had people back then, God has his people now. Yes, sir. God's people, they were in bondage. But God told Moses, I'm going to send plagues on Pharaoh until he lets my people go. Right, right, right. He said they are the sheep of my pastors. Hmm. He said they are my chosen people. Are y'all with me today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said they are my precious treasure they are my people and they're in captivity and you tell Pharaoh quit oppressing them and let them go and you know finally what happened that was the death angel that came hmm. can I get a witness yeah, yeah, yeah. that came to Egypt and the death angel killed the firstborn in every family except his people Y'all didn't say, y'all missed a shout right there. I said except his people. Come on, come on. Because guess what? The Egyptians died, but the Jews lived. That's because the unseen hand of God, the death angel, could not touch God's people. And God said, if my people. Hmm. Y'all they stand up. He said, my people. God's people were separated from the children of disobedience. They were separated from the Egyptians. Even though they were in Egypt, they were not of Egypt. Come on, come on, come on. Y'all know where I'm going with this, say don't that, you? Say that, say that. When you come over into the New Testament, hmm. you will say where Jesus made a distinction between his people and the people of the world. Come on, come on. Are y'all with me today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he lets us know that his people are chosen people. They are called by his name. Mm. I wish I had somebody. And they were chosen before the foundation of the earth. Right, right. God chose those of us who've been saved and washed in the blood. We are the sheep of his pastors. We are the chosen priesthood. We are his people by the Jesus Christ, and even though we're in this world, we're not of this world. I wish I had a praying church out here today. I don't know about you, but you know what? I'm glad I'm one of his today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'm glad I'm one of his chosen. How about you? Are you his? Are you his people? Yes, sir. Before you were ever born, he already knew you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He already knew he would save you. He already knew he had a place in heaven for you. He already knew he'd protect you during this time and other times. Some of you have been through pure hell. You should have been dead a long time ago, but God has kept you and you're still here through many dangers, toils, and snares. We've already come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've already come. I told you our first Sunday out here, we've been through worse than coronavirus. Mm. Are y'all with me today? Mm -hmm. There's some of us, we've been through some stuff that some of you couldn't imagine going through. But whatever we went through, God brought us through it. Can I get a witness? Right, right, right. And some of you who are here, you've been bruised by your past. But I want to tell you, God can bring you out. And God is going to keep you in the midst of your situation. He says, if my people. Can I tell you what this coronavirus life depends upon? Hmm. The decision that the church makes. Yes, sir. That's That's cool. I wish I had somebody. It's in the hands of the church. And that's why we need preachers. We need leaders in high places. We need God's people who will stand with a word today. And he says, if my people. This thing is contingent upon God's people. Yes, sir. Say that. Tell me while I preach today. Come on, come now on. Let me say something to you. You better take this thing personal. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said you better take this thing personal. You better hear me today. This not a, this is not a lightly thing, and this thing is not over. But can I tell you something? It can't go no further than God says it can yes, go. Yes, sir. So He said. How many people of God do I have out here today? And notice, help me, Lord Jesus, what he says to them. If my people, which are called by my name, uh -huh, uh -huh. oh, Lord, help me today. What, what, God, what, what do you want us to do? What do you, he says, if my people that are called by my name, the people I've chosen, that I've died for, he said, if they will do what? Humble themselves. Humble themselves. Help me, Lord Jesus. We live in a time now where people don't know what it means to be humble. Come on, come on. To have a contrite, I wish I had somebody. Say that. To have a contrite spirit. I think one of the best examples is in the Old Testament. I wish I had somebody. In the Old Testament, there was a king by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me today? Mm -hmm. And he thought he was somebody. Mm -hmm. And Daniel told him after he'd been having these dreams, that he dreams is about you, king. You're come a great on, man. Come on, come on. And God has blessed you. He said, but you got to humble yourself. Yes, sir. But guess what? The king didn't do it. Mm -mm. He kept thinking about how bad he was and what he had done. But one year later, yeah. I wish I had somebody. God took his mind from him. He was a king, but he went crazy. And for seven years, he crawled around on the ground eating grass like a cow. Y'all not hearing me. But after seven years, the Lord gave him his mind back. And guess what? When he got his mind back, he said, Now I know that there is a king, that there is a God, and the God of Israel, the God of Daniel. Come on, come on. Can I tell you something? God can put us in a situation to humble us. Nebuchadnezzar was so humble, he was saved because... I wish I had somebody. God put him in a perfect situation where he had to admit that God is God. May I say something to America? This is a the perfect virus. Hmm, come on. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You're right, you're right. 
And y'all can say what you want to about how it's affecting the world, but I want to tell you it's affected the church mm. in more ways than one. Because we go to church, sleep in church, play on our games in church, on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. But now God has fixed it where you can't get next to nobody. You can't go to church. I wish I had somebody. With the many blessings you had, now you wish you could go to work. You wish you could get out of the house. You wish you could go to church. Can I tell you, God knows what he's doing to bring his people back to him. Not only did he humble Nebuchadnezzar, but he humbled David. Hmm. David got besides himself. He was a king, but you remember Uriah, mm -hmm. Bathsheba's husband, had covered up his sin, had her husband killed, hmm. went on about his business. But you know what? God had a preacher. Hmm. who came to him and told him a story about a man who had a lot of sheep, long story short, and the poor man only had one sheep. Hmm. And the man with all the, all the other sheep took that poor man's sheep. And David said, if I knew a man like that, I'd kill him. Hmm. Come on, come on, come on. And the prophet, the preacher said, no, you don't understand. God told me you the man. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got all, you got all these women, but you killed a man for his own. Come on, come on. Oh, help me, Lord Jesus. And guess what? It got to David. And David repented God. He said, Lord, oh, help me, Lord Jesus. Come on, come on. Have mercy on me. I've sinned against nobody but you. Are y'all with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Yeah. Touch my heart. Give me a contrite spirit. David said, I'm wrong. And I want to get it right. Yeah. God. individual thing where we've got to not look to somebody else to do it a point says she need to do it he need to do it we need to do it mm. yeah 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 god help me preach your word preach preach he repented in the new testament there's a story about a young man we call the prodigal son he wasn't the prodigal his daddy was but that boy got besides himself, told his daddy, give me my inheritance. Even though you're still alive, I can't wait for you to wait uh, for you. I can't wait for you to die. I, I need to do what I want to do now. So just give me my money. Disrespected his daddy. His daddy gave him his inheritance. He went out to a far country, to the city lights, parted it off with prostitutes. Come on. And anything else he thought he was able to do. Come on. But one day his money ran out. Hmm. And God sent a drought in the land. And guess what? That boy hit rock bottom. Come on, come on. Can come I on. tell you sometime, sometime rock bottom can be a blessing in the sky. And when that boy hit rock bottom, he came to himself with a contrite heart. He said, you know what? I'm going back home. He said, I'm going to ask my daddy just to let me be like one of the hired servants. Mm. I don't want the rings and the, I don't want the robe. I don't want the position. I just want to go back to my daddy's house. Mm. Has anybody here ever been like that? You been out in the world and said, I'm going back to God. That boy came to himself. Went back to his daddy. And before he could get home, his daddy ran out and greeted him. Can I say something to you today? If we come back to God, church, the Lord will meet us halfway. I wish I had somebody. He'll receive us back. He will. Yes, he will. That boy had a contrite heart. Hmm. Let me ask you a question today. What condition is your heart in? Come on. If you're the child of God, if you're God's people, 
the Holy Spirit is touching your heart right now. Mm. And you know where and what you need to do in order to get things right with God. Yeah. Let me tell you a few more things. I'm going to take my seat. Not only that, but he said, if you'll humble yourself, humble yourself, mm. and then pray. Yeah, yeah. I wondered why did he put humbleness first and yeah. then pray? Because guess what? God won't hear your prayer hmm, come on. if your heart ain't right. Are y'all with me today? I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. But you can't be hating on everybody and think God's going to hear your prayer. You can't walk up with your nose up in the air thinking you somebody and think God's going to hear your prayer. Only the humble shall he hear when they call on him. And when you pray, you must pray in faith and believe him. But your heart got to be right. Come on, come on, come on. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You're right. Can I prove it by the text? Yeah. The Bible says in the gospel... There were two men went up to the temple. Mm. One was a Pharisee. Come on, come on. The other one was a publican, what we would call a sinner. Yeah. Are y'all with me today? And guess what? When the church man went up, he walked in and started talking about what all he'd done. Come on. I give my tithes. I go to church. I do this. I do that. He gave an inventory of all the good things he's done. Come on, come do on. Do you know some people like that? Yeah. All we talking about what they've done. Yeah, I yeah, do this. Yeah. I, at least I don't do that. Guess what? He wasn't praying. He was talking to himself yes, sir. because God wasn't listening to him. But here comes this man that's a sinner, and he won't even look up. Come he on. stands afar off in the in the temple. He bows his head, hits on his chest, and says, God, forgive me, a sinner. I wish I had somebody. When your heart is right. The Bible says he went home justified. Mm. Listen, when you come to God with the right heart and attitude and you pray, God will answer yes, your prayer. Yes, sir. Oh, no. Now, can I say something here going to make a lot of people mad? Mm. Go ahead. Say it. But I had to come to the conclusion myself. All right. All right. We preachers got to preach the truth. Mm. I wish I had somebody. And we got to believe what we preach. And we can't preach because we got bills to pay. So we preach those little tiptoe through the tulip sermons. Can I get a witness here? Can I tell you what? We got to tell it like it T.I. is. Come on. We got to tell the truth. If don't nobody come to church but us, we got to preach the word of God in spite of who it hurts and who it makes angry. Say that. Say that. Prayer is important. A lot of time we pray. I don't doubt that. I know a lot of you pray. But the question is, what condition is your heart in? I don't care how much faith you have. Jesus told his disciples to have faith. And you can say unto the mountains, be cast into the sea. And it'll happen. He said, but when you stand praying, forgive. Y'all didn't hear that, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, because if you don't forgive your brethren, your heavenly father won't forgive you. Yes, sir. And can I say something? There's a lot of folk in the church house who go to church every Sunday. You're God's people, but you won't forgive people, and your heart is not right. And if you want to make it, you got to get your heart right. Say it, say it. And then he says not only that. Because some of us, you can't beat us praying when bad things happen. <laughs> and we use God like a dish towel. Hmm. Once God clean answers your mess. prayer, then you, then you clean up your situation. You throw it back on the counter until you make another come on. mess. Come on, come on. But those days are over. Hmm. We got to learn how to praise him, how to serve him, how to love one another, how to keep our hearts right at all times. Are y'all with me today? Yes, sir. I told you this was a tough one. I told you this was a hard one. You should have left a while ago because it ain't going to get no better. I'm almost through. Hmm. But it's time for the church to take a heart check. Come on, come get on. Get your check. I wish I had somebody. Get a check done on your heart and on your mind. And listen, not just the people, but those of us in the pulpit, those that's in ministry. We got to check our hearts out. Right. And then he says, seek my face. Hmm. Are y'all with me today? 
Seek my face. Thank you, Mosby. Many of us come to church to see what's in God's hand, what God can give us. Come on, come on. And that's the kind of church time that we live in, the season we live in now. Yeah. It's all about coming to God for what you can get. Name it and claim it. Ten steps to victory. Ten, ten, ten steps to prosperity. Can I tell you something? We got more stuff right now than we know what to deal with. We got so many clothes and shoes we can't wear them all. Yeah. But can I yeah, tell yeah, you? Yeah. God says it's not what's in his hand. It's according to what's on his face. Hmm. Say it, say it. How many of y'all can go back with me? How I many go back with me when your mama used to bring you to church? Let me say it again. How many of y'all remember when you were kids and your mama took you to church? Or your grandmama took you to church? Yeah. And you would sit on the back row sometimes, start messing with other kids. Y'all get to playing and going on. And guess what? She didn't have to get up and go get you. Yeah, she just you. turned and looked at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you would look on her face. Yeah, yeah, can yeah. I tell you something? You can have a lot of stuff in your house and in your hand, but the question is, is God pleased with you? Come on, come on. What does his face say? And can I tell you, we need to quit living to please people and start living to please God. Yes, sir. Some of you live from day to day trying to please your friends. <laughs> Do whatever you can to look good in front of people and impress people. Come on, come on. But can I tell you something? You're wasting your time while you're trying to impress people. If God ain't pleased with it, ain't it's no all in vain. Yes, sir. You can have the house, the car, the clothes, the money. But if you don't have the favor of God and the face of God, you're in trouble. Yes, sir. We used to sing this song. God has smiled on me mm. he has set me free set me free yeah. can i ask you a question is god smiling on you today oh help me lord jesus if you could see his face today is god pleased with you mm. is god pleased with your behavior is he pleased with what comes out of your mouth is god pleased with you come on come on listen to what else he says and turn from your wicked way. Mm. I, I got to say something here. I say I got to say something here. I know y'all. Say it. Y'all tired of me? No, no, no. Mm -mm. Keep preaching. I told you this is the key. This is the key, y'all. This is our response. He says, listen, not only humble yourself and pray and seek his face, Bob, but this is a challenging part here. He said, we got to do some turning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And turning from what? Wicked from wicked ways. Yes, now, can I get a witness here? Can I say something? God's people, God's people can have wicked ways. Mm. You say, I don't believe that. Well, he just said it. If God says it, that's what he meant. Come on, come on. Notice what? I looked this up. I tried to find some stuff because today... Everything is right hmm. and nothing's wrong. Come on, come on. We live in a time now and just every man do what he wants to do, Fair. whatever right in his own eyesight. But can I tell you something? God said we got to turn from our wicked ways. Right, right. So I asked Paul, I said, Paul, what is wicked ways? And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, he said, no, uh, this also know that in the last days, hmm. Careless time, trouble in times Man, shall come. Be. Are we living in those times now? Love listen, love listen love. closely what he says. He says, for men shall be lovers love of their own faith. selves. Yeah. That's wicked, y'all. Covetous. Want what other folk have. Mm. I wish I had somebody. Come on, come That's on. why we jack people, because we want what they have. We I wish I had somebody. That's wicked. Bolsters. Mm. I wish I had somebody. Always bragging and yeah, boasting yeah, yeah. about themselves. Come on. That's wicked, y'all. And then proud. Walking around with a proud look. Nose in the air. That's wicked, y'all. And then blasphemers. Three, three. Talking against God and all that kind of Come on. against the church. That's wicked, y'all. Mm. And then disobedient to parents. Mm. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on. Disobedient to parents. That's 
that's wicked, y'all. Read. And then he says, and unthankful. After all God does for them, they're still unthankful. That's wicked, y'all. Read. And then unholy. Mm. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Well, Live now. any kind of way. Just don't matter what everybody else is doing, I'll do it. That's wicked, y'all. Come on. But then without natural affection. Uh -oh. well. I'm gonna say something here, but I gotta preach it. I'm God's preacher. Read. Listen, without natural affections, what does that mean? Listen, they are changed from a man loving a woman to a man loving a man. Come on. Unnatural, a woman is supposed to love a man, but then women will start loving women. Come on. God says, God says that's wicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Listen. You preach it. Truth breakers. Truth breakers. Listen, these truth breakers, they will say one thing. And do another. Yeah. They'll make you a promise and won't keep it. Sign a contract and won't and, and break the contract. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Mm. Listen, false accusers, liars, accusing people of things that's not true. Come on. That's wicked, y'all. Y'all y'all still with me, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Listen, not only that, but in content. Never content. Mm. No matter what they have, they're never content. Mm. God give them a new car, they want another car. Yeah. God give them a house, they want another house. God give them a job, they want another job. Never content with what you have. Can I tell you, people of God, that's wicked. We got to learn to be thankful for what God has given us. Yes, sir. And if you're thankful, he'll give you more. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Listen, look at this. Fears. Ain't scared of nothing. Hmm. Y'all ain't hear me. Come on. Some people don't fear God nor man. Hmm. Nor the devil. That's wicked, y'all. Despisers of those that are good. Hmm. You know what? I told somebody the other day. They told me, well, I ain't never done nothing to them. I know why they don't like me. I don't know why they don't like me. Can I tell you something? If you try to live for God and do what's right, there are some people going to hate you because they don't like nothing that's good. Say it, say it, say it. Y'all better give me a handkerchief. I had to hump this thing off in a second. I'm sweating. You preach it. Can I tell you something? If you're a child of God, you ought to love one another. Mm, yes, sir. And you ought to love people trying to do what's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quit talking about people who are not where you are yet. Love one another. And if they're trying to do what's good, even though they may not do it the way you do it, love them anyhow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I may not have a church tomorrow. Mm, that's all right. We'll be here. But notice what he says. We'll be here. Let me go through verse 4 real fast. I'm, I'm going to let you go. They'll be traitors. Hmm. Have anybody ever betrayed you? Yeah. False accusers. Hmm. I said that. Despise those things. Heady. Got the big head. You got any folk with a big head? <laughs> That's wicked, y'all. <laughs> High-minded. Hmm. Some people can't just get along with everyday natural people. They got to always be up in the... Come on. Y'all know what I'm talking come about. Come on, come on, come on. They think of themselves more highly than other folk. Very high-minded. Listen, lovers of pleasure hmm. more than lovers Rather of than God. God. Yes, sir. Listen, y'all. We live today in a time where people love picnics. Yeah. We like basketball and football. Yeah. You better not let the Dallas Cowboys play on Sunday morning. A lot of us are miss church. Y'all not hear me today. God let you meet a new man and you out on the you out on the beach when you should be in church. Come on, come you on. You meet this new woman. I wish I had somebody. You meet this new woman and instead of you coming to church, you laid up at home talking about we gotta have some quality time. Listen, you gotta get out of that's wickedness when you put sports and pleasure before oh God. God. Yes, sir. Listen. They look like a Christian. Mm -hmm. They act like a Christian. But the power ain't there. Come on. Well, 
Lord, I got to get out of here. What are you preaching? He said, listen. Y'all still with me, aren't you? Yeah. He said, all that stuff, my people got to turn away from it. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What will happen then, Lord? He gives us then God's response to their response. Yeah. He said, then will I hear from, from heaven. Y'all yeah. still believe in heaven, don't you? Oh, yeah. That's where God lives. He said, then will I hear from heaven. Mm. Can I say something? I know this is 2020. But I want to tell you, God is still answering prayer. Mm. Are y'all getting too hot? Wait, wait, wait. Can I say something? God, that is divine prayer answering. Mm. That God will hear our prayers from heaven. Yeah. Y'all not hearing me today. Yeah, yeah. Even though he's in heaven, he can answer your prayer right here on earth. Yes, sir. Can I get a witness? God's people need to know that God is a prayer answering God. Yes, he is. Can I get a witness? What does he say next, Mosby? Forgive that sin. I will, since they humble themselves, mm. I will hear their prayers. Mm. Y'all ain't saying nothing. How many of y'all? How many y'all here today glad? Can I get a witness? That he will forgive your sins. Mm. I don't know about you, but I had to ask him two times this morning to forgive me of my sins yeah. and forgive me of my unrighteousness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all know what? I'm glad that God will. He'll forgive your sins. Y'all to help me preach right here. I feel my help coming. Mm. I said he's a forgiving God. Yeah, he is. You may have been a prostitute or a pimp. You may have been a liar, whatever you were. God will. I said God will forgive your sins. How do you know he'll forgive your sins? He, forgive, he forgave me one day. And not one day, but every day. He's in the forgiving business. Can I get a witness? But not only will he forgive your sins, he said, I will. I'll heal the lamb. Now my last point is, I looked up this word heal. Can I get a witness? And the word is raw fall. Can I get a witness? And that word raw fall means physician. Can I get a witness? What he's saying is that when you go to the doctor, he knows how to give you the right prescription. He knows how to perform the right surgery. Can I get a witness? What he's saying is God is our physician. He's a healer. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Whatever our problem is, we got a doctor in heaven who can heal our pain. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Ain't he all right? Is there anybody here that know he's a healer? Is there anybody here know he's a way maker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
We're praying for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch Sister Lawrence from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Lord, we pray for a good report. We pray for a good report. We pray that the great physician will touch her even now. Heal in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, give her doctor's wisdom. Give her knowledge. Show them what to do and what not to do. God, we thank you for the miracle. We thank you for the blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank God. Sister Pam, Sister Pam just gave me her money for the...